And now we're going to go back to the parallel axis theorem, but there's another one. We're going to do the parallel axis theorem for the angular momentum. So let's think about a problem like this. You've got a coordinate system with an origin here, and you've got a disk, and the center of mass of the disk is just moving up in the plane, something like that, the CM, and the disk is also rotating in this sense, like this. So let's see, the angular, or the angular velocity vector is into the board, since it's spinning like that. And you just ask yourself, uh, what is the total L? of that disk. It's got some L because it's moving with respect to the origin. I accidentally drew it almost on line with the origin, but I didn't quite. Okay, so it will have some L due to its translation, and it'll also clearly have angular momentum due to its rotation. So how do we get the total L, whoops, I forgot, about the origin? There we go. All right, so what this says is very similar to the parallel axis theorem for the moment of inertia, is that the total you can get by adding two terms. One has to do with the center of mass velocity, so the cross product of the uh, position vector from the origin uh, to the object, like that, RCM, and the momentum vector, which of course is just mass times the VCM. So that cross product would give you uh, the thing acting as a point particle. And then you just have to add I omega for the rotation about the center of mass, ICM omega, like that. And it's a little bit weird. You say, how's it parallel axis? Because this is about a point, and this has an axis. Well, you got to have your R and your P in such a way that their cross product makes, uh, is around, um, their cross product makes an L that is parallel to this L, which is in the direction of omega. Right? So that's what makes it a parallel axis theorem, is that those two things need to, in the sense that these two are parallel. Um, we can test it uh, by seeing how useful it might have been. Not too long ago, I recall we were working on a, um, on a disk bar problem, disk bar recently, and we had a bar like this, Right, it had some length L, and we wanted to think about what happens when it gets struck in a way that it starts to rotate like that. So it has, um, again, it has omega into the board, but it also started to move forward. Remember, the disk struck it, and it moved like that, VCM, like this. And let's see, the question is, and we did a lot of worrying and thinking about if we consider the angular momentum about uh, a certain point, it should be zero, but then it doesn't look like it's zero because it translates forward. We wanted to know, is it really zero? What is it? We did this really long integral, remember? It's really difficult to do that integral. But now we're gonna show we could have solved it with the parallel axis theorem. We could have said the angular momentum of the bar due to this translation and this rotation. First, let's look at um, the R cross P part. Right, P is just MV going this way. R, let's see, we're doing this with respect to the top because it had zero angular momentum uh, about that axis. Uh, then let's see, it's R is down, RCM, and P is that way, right? R uh, cross P, so it would be out of the board, and it would be R is one half L. So that magnitude, that's MVCM. And then sign the angle between them, sign of the angle between them is one, because theta is 90, and it's out of the board. So I'll just put out under it, like that. Okay, so that axis is this way. So now we just have to add the uh, rotating part, right? So it's rotating like that. I, the moment of inertia of the bar around its um, center of mass is 1 12th ML squared. I do believe, I recall, 1 12th ml squared times omega. All right. And which way is this? Same direction as omega. This is in. Aha. So there's a chance those two are going to cancel. Right? One is out and one is in. But if we want that to be zero, we have to remember in this specific problem, 
there's a relationship between the center of mass velocity and omega. That's what we got from all the elastic collision stuff. Um, the solution was that uh, the VCM, the velocity of the center of, the, of center mass was two fifths um, the initial velocity. And the omega, the angular rotation, angular velocity was 12 over 5L, initial velocity like that. All right, so now we can say, what's the total then? We'll plug these in. Uh, this is 1 half, so that would become 2, 1, 1 fifth, right? The 2's cancel. 1 fifth LM, and then it's just VI instead of VCM. And that's out of the board. Mm -hmm. And then this one is plus, let's see, 1 twelfth ML squared times omega, which is 12 fifths L VI, and that's in. So then we start canceling and stuff, and we see that goes with that, and we have 1 fifth M L, L just like before VI. It's the exact same positive number, but one is out and one is in. Therefore, it equals zero. So that was a lot easier than uh, the integral, is to use parallax's theorem to get the momentum about uh, a certain point.